Hi everyone, Mr. Lee here. Uh, this is going to be the final video for the rotational uh, unit. Um, this is probably the, the hardest topic behind this entire unit. Um, and every year on the AP exam, I do see this, uh, this concept coming up um, and it is very important for you to know. So without further ado, let's get started. So the idea is rotational momentum, linear and rotational momentum. All right. So here's the situation. Um, we'll do, you know, America's pastime, baseball. Okay. So the pitcher throws the ball. We have a baseball flying through the air. Boom. Okay. It's going through the air and we have a bat. Okay. Uh, and the baseball and the bat, they collide. Right. So this is what we know. When the bat is swinging, it's moving in a rotating pattern, a circular pattern. So we can say that this bat has rotational momentum. Okay, and the ball, it has linear momentum. So here we have two different forms of momentum. And according to the conservation of momentum, your momentum initial and your momentum final have to be equal, right? So we discussed this, PE is equal to, uh, or PO is equal to PF, or LO is equal to LF. Now, here's what's so tricky about this situation with the bat and the ball. Um, with the bat and the ball, we have two different forms of momentum. Now, to expound on why this is so tricky, uh, we know that the for a system, right, the momentum for a system can't change unless there is an outside force. But if we define the system as both the the bat and the ball, then we have here two different forms of momentum. The bat has rotational momentum and the ball has linear momentum. And so it's kind of weird that something that has linear momentum can interact with something that has, or excuse me, something that has rotational momentum can interact with something with linear momentum. Now to give you a different kind of sense of this, let's think about golf, right? So with golf, we have a, a golf ball and currently the golf ball has uh, no momentum. Okay, no momentum at all. Um, but then we have a golf club. Okay, so that's gonna be my golf club. Now, when the golf club is moving in an arc, right? So it's gonna be swinging in an arc. We're not gonna be hitting it super hard. We're just gonna be hitting it so that it could roll across the floor like so, okay? This is weird, if you really think about it, because the swinging golf club has rotational momentum. But that rotational momentum is going to give this golf ball linear momentum. So according to the conservation of momentum, right, we said that LO is equal to LF and PO is equal to PF. If we take a look at it, it's really, really weird because initially this golf ball, it had no momentum. Okay, no momentum. But after the club hit the ball, we say that it had some momentum and we're just going to call that P. Okay, so this idea, it's, it's super weird. How did we get momentum? And at this point, you might be saying, well, Mr. Lee, the ball gained momentum because the club hit it, of course. But here's the thing. We can't say that because we say the system, okay, the system is both the club and the ball. So remember, the momentum within the system, it can change from one form to another, but it can't create momentum you can't create momentum and that only comes from an outside force and we call that uh we call that impulse okay there is no outside force because the club and the ball it's all part of the system so what does that mean where did this mysterious momentum come from okay where did this linear momentum come from and if you are still saying mr lee i what are you trying to say here what do you mean, where did the ball's momentum come from? It came from the club. Well, if you are still fervent about that, you are actually correct. This linear momentum actually came from the club. But in order to satisfy our conditions, we don't say that the ball has linear momentum. We actually say the ball has rotational momentum. Let's dive into it. So that's my big intro. All right. So classic scenario um ball hitting a so we have a ball and this ball is moving and we have a rod okay and this rod is fixed right there so the ball is going to be moving 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 and let's say it hits the rod at point right there we'll call that point r and we're going to call that point r because from there 
to there is a distance r away. Okay, so let's go into why we can say that this ball that's moving linearly, aka okay, translational momentum, is moving with a rotational momentum. Okay, so we are actually not taking a look at the ball as if we were we are looking at the ball, um, but we are actually looking at the ball as if we were right there, looking at from the point of view of this pivot point. Okay, so if we were to shrink ourselves uh, and we were to stand like we're standing at that pivot point. So according to our field of view, this ball, as soon as it's approaching this uh, this rod, because we are at what we call a pivot point, we, we're not going to be moving, right? We are stationary. But that ball that is moving, because it is at a distance r away from the pivot point, we can say that the ball is, well, it's technically considered to be rotating. Okay, and so with that being said, we don't say that this ball has a linear momentum when it approaches the stick. We say it has a linear momentum. Okay, and after the ball hits the stick, well, the stick is actually going to rotate, so it will actually have a rotational momentum. But for the sake of conservation of momentum, we say that when the ball hits the rod at that moment, as it's approaching the rod, it has linear or it has rotational momentum. And so we would write it something like this. Okay, now I will highlight the actual equation, but I want to show you how we get there first. We say that the ball has the initial momentum, right, linear momentum, and the stick has linear momentum. And let's say that after the two hit, um, the, the stick, it's going to swing, okay, kind of exaggerated the, the stick a little bit, but it's going to, it's going to be swinging uh, in a counterclockwise fashion and after the ball hits it's going to bounce off go in the opposite direction all right so here's the situation we say initially as the initial momentum and it has a initial rotational momentum and after the ball bounces off it we say that it has a linear momentum and the stick it definitely has a final momentum but in order for us to keep the conservation of momentum uh, true we can't say that this is linear momentum because we are taking a look at the ball as if we were at the pivot point and according to our field of view when it's approaching that 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 stick it's as if it's rotating around us okay because we're like the quote unquote center of the universe kind of idea and so we add a variable here we add a variable r okay and so when we add this variable r, so we're multiplying momentum times r, and so it kind of looks like this, mvr plus lo is equal to mvr plus lf, right? So this is the final velocity, uh, initial velocity. So we get something like this, okay? Now what this actually turns out to be, m times v times r, okay? This is actually the equation for l, because we know that l is i omega and we know that i is m r squared okay and we know that omega omega is actually velocity divided by the radii the rotating radii so if we take a look here mathematically we have a radius in the numerator well we have two of them and we have one in the denominator and so we can cancel out that square in this denominator and we're left with m times r times v and I'm just going to rearrange it so that it's m times v times r okay so because we are looking at the the linear moving object like uh, from a very specific position right we're looking as if we are standing right there is that radius away we can say that it is actually moving with a linear momentum and so here's a big takeaway in order to get uh, the rotational form of momentum of an object moving in a straight line, all we have to do is multiply that object that is moving straight line by r to get the rotational momentum. And so for our situation here, we say that there's initial momentum, we're going to call it 1, plus momentum 2 is equal to L final 1 plus L final 2. Okay, so here is our big idea. This is the conservation of momentum. Well, technically, you're going to start off with this form, okay, because we have two objects, and those two objects are both rotating, and from there, we can break it down like so.
all right and then from there we could break it down even more so from uh, from the second line we can say so NVOR plus L initial so instead of saying L initial we can say I omega initial is equal to MVFR plus I omega final so for our scenario here this is what the equation will turn out to be okay and once again it all depends on the different scenario so for example in this scenario we had a linearly moving object hitting a stationary uh, stick uh, and it bounced off and that's an elastic collision if it was an, e an elastic collision we would adjust the equation so that it would be appropriate for that situation as well okay all right so let's do let's do a um, a different kind of scenario so that you can see uh, how we can use our equation and um, our favorite thing to just cancel things out because they equal zero. All right, so we're gonna do a very similar situation, um, but let's do a ball that is stationary. And this ball that is stationary is going to get hit by a stick, okay? And the stick has a pivot point right there. I'm gonna call that PP for a pivot point, right? And it's gonna swing and it's gonna hit that ball. So after it hits the ball, let's say the stick comes to a complete stop. Okay, so our omega is zero. Okay, but this ball, it moves forward. I think there's a, a game. What was it? It has like a mallet and a ball, and you play it in like a lawn. That's very similar to this. All right. Okay, um, and we will say that the, the rod has a length of radius of capital R, uh, and all of this, like this ball is on the floor. Okay, so we have something like this, and we say that our initial will just be omega. So in this scenario, um, trust me when I say it is best to start off by setting up the situation. So we have how many objects? We have two objects, right? So L1, L2, plus L1 final, plus L2 final. And let's call this L1 the rod. So L1 rod and L2 ball, L1 final of the rod, L2 final of the ball. Okay, um, all right. Now, initially, we say that the ball is not moving so that we can cancel out this uh, the second one, okay? And after the rod hits the, the ball, the rod comes to a standstill, so that cancels out. And so our, our equation is L1 rod is equal to L2 final of the ball. All right, now you have to ask yourself, which one of these is moving in a linear fashion? And the answer is the ball. The ball is moving in the linear fashion, so you're going to use the the translational version of the rotational motion or rotational momentum. So that will be m times v times r. Okay, and because this object, this stick, is actually moving in a rotational pattern, we can replace this with i omega. All right, um, and from there, based on what the problem is looking for, you would solve for your missing variable. Okay. Uh, let's do one final, one other one. Okay, so uh, you can think of this like a lacrosse situation uh, or like a net, right? A ball, so we'll say that a ball is moving this way and we have a like a catching net, net of some sort. All right, so we have a catching net of some sort. So this net, we say that it has zero initial momentum uh, and we'll say that this ball has some initial velocity called V and it's going to strike at a radius r away. Now, it doesn't have to strike at a full radius r. Like, the ball could hit somewhere like here, and that, that just means that the r radius would change, right? But for this scenario here, we're going to say that it's going to actually hit the net at location r. It hits the net, the ball and the net, um, they're going to combine, and it's going to be, so we'll have the ball in the net like so. And then after uh, it catches it, the ball net situation is going to move in a, a clockwise fashion. It's going to rotate okay, because of the, the momentum. All right, so for a scenario like this, same as always, you start off with the number of objects. All right, so we have L1, L2. I'm going to call this ball object 1 and this net object 2 um, is equal to L1 final plus L2 final. Now, see what I do here. Okay, so this is our, uh, our scenario here, um, but I'm going to adjust it so that we have uh, MVR because we're going to say that because this is the one actually moving in a linear fashion um, plus I omega, right? And then we'll cancel this out a little bit because our omega does equal to zero. But see what I do here. So 
I normally we would say that these two are combined, but we we don't know what the eyes are. Okay, so I'm going to show you two different versions of this. Um, when you are given this rotating moving object, uh, we can combine it, right? We can say that is L1 plus L2 and VR plus I omega. And for a scenario like this, where it's L1 plus L2, where it's equal to I1 plus 2 omega, this right here, this I1 plus 2, we don't know what that is. Okay, there's a chart for all of these eyes, and so here this eye is usually given. Okay, because we don't know what this inertia is, that's given to you. It's either that or they'll give you a formula. They'll say use I is equal to, I don't know, like one twelfth MR squared, right? Whatever it is, I don't know. They'll give this to you. But for a scenario like this, because we don't know what I is, I'm just gonna leave it as I one plus two. Okay, and this is our formula. We can cancel out the things that cancel out, such as the omegas. So we can say that MVR is equal to I1 plus 2 omega. All right, and we can say this because one, we don't know what I is, um, but two, we canceled out everything that's a zero. So this is a zero, uh, and this will be rotating in whatever fashion. And so from there, based on what the problem is asking you to find, you can isolate the variable and find it. All right, so let's do a quick recap. Um, this idea, it's it's a little bit tricky to get started because you have to convince yourself that a object moving in a straight line, uh, it can be translated into an object that is rotating, right? It is one and the same. It all depends on your point of view. Okay, so we went over the how uh, that can be uh, taken into like this point of view. And second, we came across how we can turn a linear moving object into a rotating object, and that is through uh, substitution of equations. Right? And then from there, we saw that all you got to do is count the number of objects that are moving, um, because those are the, the momentum, and you set it equal to each other because of conservation of momentum. And remember, the only time momentum can change is, there, is if there's an outside force. Um, and then from there, we came up with technique. Okay, and a technique is you have to ask yourself, what is moving in a straight line? And if it's moving in a straight line, you have to use the linear momentum version of the rotational uh, momentum equation. So that's MVR. And if it's not moving in a straight line, you use I omega if it's actually rotating. Okay, so we came up with the two different versions of that equation. And from there, all you got to do is one, draw the scenario, figure out what you're looking for, and then solve for the scenario. All right? Okay, so I'll see you next time. This is the end of the rotational momentum equation video. Bye-bye.